Duo tutorial for you because you seem to like Super Duo tutorials so I don't know why I don't film more of them but I saw this picture on Pinterest and um, it didn't come with any instructions, the link didn't lead to anywhere, it literally was just uploaded to Pinterest, no source attached to it or anything. The link to the original pin is in the description box but I had a look at it and I worked out how to make one myself so I decided to. I have this one here and then I made a blue one as well or well, the blue one I made first it's possibly not the most logical way to make it I won't lie um, I can sometimes be a bit backwards in my working out how to do things but when you're just looking at a picture and you just have to work backwards from it it can be a bit strange and a bit um, it's a bit weird to do basically but I made it work for me so but yes, you didn't click on this video to listen to me waffle on, so let's just get on with the tutorial, shall we? So, to make these cute little flowers, you are going to need some Super Duo beads, or twin beads. They're just these cute little oval shaped beads that have two holes in them, like this. You are going to need some size 10 seed beads, size 11 will also work, I just have a lot of size 10, and some 4mm pearls. And then for the thread, I am going to be using like a clear fishing line type thread. It's a monofilament thread is what it's called. And it's a 2.5 millimeter or a 0 0.01 um, inch monofilament thread, so it's quite thin. So we are going to start by picking up 10 seed beads. No, 10 super duos. And sometimes super duos are blocked in uh, one of the holes, so just make sure that both of the holes are clear because you're going to be using both of them. So we have the 10 Super Duo beads threaded on. We're going to slide that down a bit and then tie our monofilament thread in a double knot. So we're basically making these one unit at a time and we're going to be joining them all together. This is probably not the correct way of doing it, it's just the way that I'm going to do it. So I'm now going to, just going to trim so both of the ends are the same length for ease. So now I'm taking my 4mm pearl and I'm threading both of the monofilament thread ends. Okay, I think I fixed the focus, sorry. So both of the monofilament threads are, or both of the ends are going through that bead. You then want to lay that bead in the middle and take one of the monofilament threads and put it one side of the Super Duo beads and the other side above. So I'm taking this end and it's going underneath all of those uh, Super Duo beads there. And then this one's going over the top like so. And then I'm going to tie these two ends in a knot. Like so. Make sure it's a nice tight knot because now you are going to trim those threads very close. And then you're just going to repeat this um, until you have enough flowers for whatever project you're doing. So I'm just making a necklace of five flowers. So I'm going to be making four more of these and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so I have finished making my five flowers. I'm going to get a bit more supple mat, which is the monofilament thread. And boop, just to make sure I have enough. Um, I have about a metre, which is far too much, but yeah, I'm overly cautious. So now I'm going to pick up um, five little seed beads. If you uh, prefer, you can use a needle. I forgot to say that earlier, but um, I like making my life awkward and dropping seed beads everywhere. One, two, three, four. And through that fifth seed bead, so the one we've just picked up, 
I'm going to cross the other end of my supp supple max or monofilament thread or fishing line or whatever you call it. So I'm going to cross back through it. So it's like that. And then if you hold both ends of the thread together, come on, plastic, cooperate with me. Then it, you should, and then pull the bead down it should go nice and central in the middle of the thing. And you get a little loop, which you can use to attach the uh, jump ring to. So now, I'm taking one side at a time. I'm threading through my Super Duo, pick up a seed bead, thread through the next super duo and we're going through the top hole which is the remaining hole I'm sure you've uh, sure you worked that out and pull that down so that should fit in there wonderful stuff and then pick up another seed bead it's not cooperating and go through the next one for this first one, I'm going to go through four super duos. Um, and then stop. I'm not going halfway. So I'm just attaching this mini C beads on one side to start with, and then I'm going to start with the other side. And repeat. So threading through that first super duo. Pick up a seed bead, thread through the next one. But this time I'm going um, all the way around to meet the other thread. If you're making a bracelet, you won't want to string it like this. You're gonna to want to go half way. Um, if you discover that you accidentally have threaded on a bead with a blocked hole in it, that isn't a problem. Um, just get a needle, a strong needle, and you should be able to poke the extra glass out. Okay, so we are now coming out of the hole here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a seed bead on one of my strands. I'm going to cross back through it with another strand, like so, like we did in the beginning. Oh, not the camera, sorry everyone. And pull that down. So now you can just tie that off if you want to, if you want to make earrings, because it's quite pretty. If you're making a bracelet, you are going to want to come out of the opposite gap to here, so you're going to want to come out of this one instead of this one. But like I said, I'm not making a bracelet. And then you're going to want to pick up a seed bead on each thread. And then pick up another seed bead and cross over through it again. And then you are going to start that again. So once again, just going through four of them. So repeating exactly what I've just done.
and then picking up another seed bead, crossing the thread through it if I didn't drop the thread, which is my speciality. There we go. It's not as difficult as I'm making it look. It's just not as close as I would usually have for beadwork. There we go. It's crossing it through, pulling it down. So that's two of them attached. Now I'm just going to repeat all of that for the next three. So doing this little bit here, then doing attaching this, and then I'll be back to show you how to finish it off. So this is where I'm at at the minute. I have strung my five uh, flowers together. I'm just going to do the last seed bead, which is another crossover one, as I'm sure you all knew already. I'm just going to cross it over there. Boop. And so now I'm going to pick up four more seed beads. And because um, we need to make the loop on the other side. So one, two. And then three and four on this one here. If you try this with beading thread, let me know. Um, I imagine it would work, but I just haven't tried it. Um, which doesn't mean anything, it just means I haven't tried it. Because I just thought monofilament thread would hold it, hold its um, shape a bit better. So I'm now just going to knot this at the top. In a nice tight knot, because obviously if this falls apart, then it all falls apart. No pressure, Hannah, no pressure. I want to wear it this afternoon, no pressure. I'll do one more knot just to be on the safe side. And then I'm just going to thread the ends back through uh, the seed beads a bit, if I can. thread this on a needle and do it that way instead. So I'm literally just threading back through oh loop and then So you can do it without a needle if you don't have a needle, it's not an issue. But it's just easier with a needle. So now we're just going to trim off the excess as close as I can to the beads. And there is that part finished. Sorry if you can hear uh, cathedral bells are ringing. So I have a chain that I've cut down to the length that I want it. I've attached a clasp to it. I can move these seed beads out of the way. And, um, or you can just get any chain that you cut in half. Um, it's not an issue. And then taking my four millimeter jump rings and my chain nose pliers, I'm just gonna twist them open and throw it somewhere. There it is. And then slide that through that loop I made, attach that to the chain and twist it back close. You always want to be twisting your jump rings, not pulling them open. If you pull them open, it's near impossible to get them back to their perfectly circular shape, but if you twist it open, it's a lot easier. I 
and then your necklace is ready to wear. Thank you very much for watching this video. Now you know how easy it is to make these. They're quite fun. Not too difficult, don't take too long. You can whip them up quite quickly. And I'm really interested to see the color combinations that you come up with um, because I'm nosy, basically. If you did enjoy this video, it would mean a lot to me if you gave it a thumbs up. Your support truly means the world to me and why not hit subscribe? I post a new craft tutorial every Sunday here in the corner of craft and then I post bonus videos in the week as well on a Tuesday and on a Thursday. And have you seen my bonus videos from this week? On Tuesday, I did a plan with me and it's basically where I plan my week in my personal planner and you come along with me and watch me decorate my week and find out what video is coming up and all of that fun stuff. And then on Thursday, I had a tea review or filmed a tea review um, and that is where I review a tea because I really enjoy tea. If you do decide to recreate anything using one of my tutorials, I want to see a picture of it. That's what I want to do. I want to see a picture of it. So feel free to post pictures, share pictures on social media using the hashtag the corn of craft so I can see them for myself, see how amazingly talented you are, see what colours, combinations you've come up with, what you use the pieces for, do you use them as earrings, do you use them as necklaces, do you use them as bracelets? I want to know because I'm really nosy. If there are any pins or anything that you have seen a photo of that you want me to work out how to do it, let me know, leave me a comment in the comment section down below and I can see if I can make that happen for you and yes. Thank you very much once again for watching and I shall see you very soon in my next video. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Hannah and today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute beaded charm. Ba -da -da, back on the Disney theme series words, yeah.